Hello, my name is Mingers and welcome to Unfiltered, Conversations with Creators. This is a podcast where we speak to content creators of all sizes to learn about the journey of how they began, how they got to where they are now and where they want to go to in the future. The aim is to create a fun and engaging resource that we can all learn from as well as give us something to look back on in the future. In episode 3, we talked to Brandon, also known as The Wampus, who is the head editor and manager for Jowo and Exact. B is also an extremely entertaining streamer in his own right. Previously focused on Call of Duty, he now streams himself editing content and giving insightful tips about how to create videos for the greatest Warzone players in the game. Brandon's socials will be displayed on the screen and linked in the description below. Go drop him a follow. He's due for his quarterly stream any day now. If you're enjoying the podcast and this type of content, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you loved hearing about the most. We have plenty more of these to release in the coming weeks and you do not want to miss any of these conversations. So without taking up too much of your time, let's get started. Brandon, one thing I wanted to ask you Okay. What is your, straight off the bat, what is your number one go-to have to have it dessert? <sighs> oh, that's a good question. I, mm, like, am I going out to eat or is this like, if it's my birthday and I get to pick what I want for dessert? If it's your birthday and you can go out for dinner. And we can go, okay. Sure. Whatever you like. <sighs> Okay. Uh, well, the the first thing that comes to my mind because I just have like really fond childhood memories of it. Um, I used to love getting like melted chocolate cake. You know where it's like a warm chocolate cake, and then they put a vanilla ice cream on top, and it's just like like super gooey. Mm. Yeah, that's my favorite. Like a lava cake. Like a yes, a lava cake. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Delicious. Yes. A lava cake for sure. That is amazing. I know has it's that, a little boring, that... but like that was the first thing that came to my mind. No, that's not boring. That is actually quite exotic. Has that uh, changed over the years or has that been something you've had for a while? No, it was something I used to have a lot as a kid. You know what I actually like having a lot now is like coffee flavored desserts, like coffee ice cream. <sighs> mm. Yeah, I never liked coffee flavored stuff as a kid. I definitely agree. No, that. definitely not. I have a very vivid memory of my dad sitting on the couch with me and he's like, do you want to try a cup of coffee? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he gave it to me <laughs> and, and I was like, why do you drink this? Like, why? Yeah, this is disgusting. This is there. <laughs> there's better ways. Like, why not just have milk, dad? This is awful. Mm hmm. Yeah. One but, thing that has changed recently is you've done a bit of a rebrand. So you were formerly known as the Wampus. Oh, for the longest time. Yeah. What happened there? How, why Why the sudden change? Or is that um, a long time coming? I don't know, man. I'm still trying to find myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> the I would say I picked, I was Wampus for a long time, honestly, just because that was like my, my gamer name for a while. And it's just a, a fun, unique name. And I ended up getting the unique handles on a lot of platforms so it's cool because like i have just that with no letters or anything on um like playstation and activision and twitch and all that but it, i just never have anybody call me wampus like i've never ever had anybody hit me up and say wampus are you around or like wampus how are you doing today and it got a little weird when i've started doing editing for people and like getting more involved in the scene and people would email me wampus and say wampus <laughs> what are your going rates for and i'm like please don't call me wampus my name is brandon please don't like you know i don't want to i don't have to yeah. sign my name wampus so i think just more for professional reasons i've changed it um most people have called me b and i've had friends call me b randon for uh, you know since like i was a kid so it just i don't know i would say mostly for like professional reasons i don't know if i'll go back to wampus if i want to like get back into gaming and creating stuff but for now it for now wampus is uh he's taking a little nap he d yeah he's taking a nap i assumed it was professional reasons yeah but um yeah i've always known he was a uh, wampus and and b specifically so. yeah yeah i mean like i 
if people want to still call me Wampus, that's fine. Or like Poos or whatever. That's that's fine with me. <laughs> so you've had that name forever, like basically since OG PlayStation days or whatever, Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've had some some other handles, but Wampus is the one that stuck around for sure. Okay. And you and you took that over to Twitch first time. Mm-hmm. When when did you first uh, make yourself familiar with Twitch? When did that happen? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would say I've been, I've used, or I should say I've watched Twitch for a while just because I've always loved gaming. I I don't know. I I feel like in this space it's not that weird but growing up i people always thought it was weird that i used to just enjoy watching people play like single player games you know like i'd go over to somebody's house and i'd be like you should just play batman he's like why <laughs> like because i just want to watch <laughs> so really yeah um i don't i've just always loved gaming in that aspect just no matter what the game is so i've watched twitch here and there but i wouldn't i would say that i started getting more involved with watching Twitch um, in Black Ops 4 and Blackout. Um, yeah. It was when I was finishing my grad degree, I believe. And yeah, I don't know. I just needed something to have like next to me to so, like another person um, in the mm -hmm. room. Because at the time I was finishing, I believe I was working on my thesis and I was finishing that and, you know, like it's, it's similar to working at home, like you're by yourself all all day, yep. just like locked in. So um, one of the first big streamers I actually watched and and got involved with their community was uh, Teep when he was playing Blackout. Oh, Teep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's he's probably the person I've watched the longest. I used to watch him here and there um, in some of the previous CODs, and I've just always liked Teep as, as a guy. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Um, always was into cod and so he was playing the most recent iteration of call of duty at the time and it ended up being blackout so yeah he's he's who i ended up watching and learning a lot from wow tape the og yeah he's been around for a long time he was number one in in cod for the longest time right yeah he's been for the last couple years for streaming but he wasn't at the time at blackout i think he was still coaching in the league and mm. i can't remember if he was coaching for optic or not at the time but yeah he i i think he was trying to figure out you know what his next steps were because he had stepped away from the the call of duty league and uh you know he wasn't really sure what he's going to be doing and then I, streaming kind of took off from him yeah yes so that was your like background noise that was your yeah and then in the room too yeah i mean and he was playing blackout and I started playing Blackout, and I feel like in Call of Duty, you don't really know how good somebody can be until you start watching people that are really good at the game. Because I've always played with, you know, like you play with your friends or whatever, you play split screen and all that. And then like, there's always one who's kind of like, the better person and that's like that's like the max ceiling you know mm. and then i started watching teep and he'd get 20 kill games I'm like wait what <laughs> are you kidding <laughs> mind-blowing what so yeah um he he was like my introduction into the more competitive world of call of duty i would say yeah that's a that's a great first uh introduction to competitive stuff yeah yeah what about you what was uh who was your first person that you really started watching on twitch the mm -hmm. first person i really watched um was iceman isaac so isaac i had a yeah i feel like that's similar a, vibes to teep like there's like they're the like the deep voice professional authority yeah the gelled yeah. hair <laughs> yeah. mr slick no because yeah, yeah i i had um a long a couple of years off from uh, Call of Duties. I was into Call of Duties from like 2005. Um, but when I got married, had some kids, I had some time off gaming. And then when I came back, it was um, Warzone had just came out and um, Isaac had his 
uh, you know, pinwheel rotation and mm-hmm. this is how you get better. So mm-hmm. started from there. I had a Twitch account, but I can't remember how I had one already. I had made one previously, but I had no idea what yeah. I was watching. So yeah, same. Yeah, definitely. That was the same. I was like, I think I'm going to follow Teep. And I was like, I'm already logged in. How? <laughs> <laughs> how? No, Google. Google just knows everything, right? I know. It's scary. Um, so when you started watching, were you were you streaming at all? Had no. That happened yet? No. I don't even know how you started, to be honest. Um, no, I wasn't. But I will say it was something that I always wanted to do. I don't. I don't think long term it's something that I would see for myself as like a career path. But like I said, I've always enjoyed gaming. Um, I grew up watching Machinima and the old mm. Call of Duties, and you know, like. Hutch, C Nanners, like Tabes, um, all those guys, Sark. Um, so I remember in high school, I really wanted, to, I can't remember what they were called. I want to say it was like a Dazzle or something, but you know, they were like the, the 360p recording devices that you could get. And I was like, <laughs> I want to get one of those. Mom, yeah. I'm dropping out of college. I'm going to record gaming. And uh, it just never happened. So. It was something that I've always wanted to do just for fun. Mm. Uh, and I didn't start really until, yeah, until Blackout, until T. Um, yeah. Actually, that's a lie. I didn't start streaming until after I had met Zach. Because I think I had met Zach and he, he was doing it. And I was kind of like um, trying to figure out stuff with him at the same time. And then I was like, oh, mm. I could do this. And that's when I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've got your Twitch checker. Yeah, sorry, your Twitch stats pulled up right now. Wait. But I just wanted to ask real quick: what was your um, what was your uh, degree in, or where did you get your your masters in? So my I have a bachelor's in aerospace engineering, and then my master's is in aerospace as well, with a concentration in, I guess you could say aeronautics. So I'm like air focused in the aerospace world. You can either go airplanes or like satellites rockets so i'm airplanes dude i always thought that was a myth i thought that was a joke no, I, didn't that was real, <laughs> I promise i actually hold on i have them right here on the ground <laughs> this one is oh it's got my it's got all my info on it just believe me <laughs> no i believe you i believe you i have them that's that's insane. Yeah, I always thought that was a um, just a, like a meme that you're an astronaut, you know, engineering and all this kind of stuff. Like, I'm definitely not an astronaut, but I did do engineering. You're an astronaut. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I've seen your, your Twitch tracker and you started around June of 2019. Black Ops 4 and Just Chatting. That's me. I'm a full-time content and, creator. Yeah, I can see... Um, you had some pretty uh, interesting growth from the start, and then you took a bit of a break, I think. Well, not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Something like you? No, I would never take a break. No? No, so um, so you started Black Ops 4, you, you met Zach? Yes. And uh, you figured out how to start streaming and stuff like that. Was that because you, you thought, I could do that, that's cool, I want to be the guy people watch, or was it just... I'm going to be gaming. I'll start streaming at the same time anyway. Let's see what happens. Oh, man. These are good questions, brother. Um, yeah. I would... So... I guess I wanted to start streaming to see, you know, what what I could do with it. Um, mm. Because I always felt like I was a, a decent player. And then like I had mentioned to you, I started watching Teep. And I was like, dang, like he's really good. And so I started learning from him. And then he was doing wagers with Merck, I think at the time. He's doing 2v2 wagers. And I was like, oh, that's dope. So you can like play against people for money. And at the time, I had no idea how toxic the wager scene was. I was like, oh, <laughs> right. it's probably like a pickup league, you know? Like I'll go yeah. play with some of the boys and like it'll be a good old then <laughs> No, dude. No, I did not belong in there. Wow. But yeah, so I started doing uh, wagers and I did not come out net positive. But that's how I met Z. Um, I played against him in a wager and I will on the all I'll say is that 
All I'll say is that I should have won that wager, but I was a good guy and I helped him out. And I, yeah. he knows what happened and he'll probably disagree with me, but um, no, he'll probably just say like, yeah, B's the best. He smoked me. Cause he's <laughs> like, I don't know. That's just how sarcastic he is. But yeah, so that's how I met Z. And then I started playing with him a little bit and it was like a similar thing to T where I watched Zach play. And if you've ever seen Z or Joe or some of the, like the really good players play, it's just like, it opens up your world to call of duty. Like I will f forever say that Zach was the best blackout player of all time. Like I know mm. that people have their favorites with like T gang and, um like dill and some of the other people that were playing at the time but i never saw zach lose a gunfight to like any of those guys he was insanely good so which segues into like back to me getting into streaming um yeah i felt like i was improving a lot i learned a lot from z playing with him watching him play so yeah i, I felt like i wanted to see what i could do with it um at the time, yeah, in blackout for sure. Hit the guy in the uh, helicopter. Oh, oh my God! Oh, Brandon! Oh, Brandon! <laughs> oh my God! I'm flying at this dude. Oh my God! You're the best. He's nasty. He's You're the nasty. best. He's You're the nasty. best. Let's go, Unreal <laughs> Gas for this man, Brandon. Oh my God! Yo, what did you drink this morning, brother? Oh my God! Oh. Were you doing anything else in terms of uh, making videos or anything like that, or were you just simply turning on streams? And no. Playing? Yeah, I, I wasn't. I was just, I was just doing it for fun. Um, I actually, yeah, I feel. I think for the longest time, I didn't turn on subs on my stream. Just because I didn't really feel like I, um, I wanted people to pay to watch, if that makes yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people who stream go through that same thought process. You know, like there's a little back and forth with like, ah, like is it mm. is the sub really worth the five dollars for my stream kind of thing? So, yeah. um, yeah, I it was just for fun. I wasn't doing videos or editing for any for anybody at the time. No, nah, definitely. I feel that. I, I felt the same way. I, I didn't want to almost once I reached that affiliate stage, I was like, I might not even take this up because like, who's even going to pay to, to watch it? Anyway? And like, it's free. I would prefer people to hang out for free anyway. I know. Now, yeah, I, it's just for me, it's still a weird thought, like putting value on what you're doing, if that makes sense. You know, it's easy yep. when you like, you work for somebody or, um, you're selling like a product. It's easier to say like, you know, this is this is ten dollars for you. But like my stream, if you would like to support it, is five dollars. I don't know. It's just it's still to me is like a weird concept. But um, you know, when you watch somebody else stream, and you're like, I want to support them. It's it makes sense to you. So it just it's yeah. getting out of your own head, I guess. Yeah, it is definitely getting out of your own head. Um. But so when did you start with the editing stuff? Because at the moment, I would say you're like almost like a leading the way in the way some of Warzone edits and like stuff are done, really changing. Um, I feel like the way it's not just gameplay, it becomes more telling a story and being having some drama and, and really cool effects and rather than just flashy uh, cuts and everything like that. So you're very, very good. And you're saying you haven't, you weren't editing any videos back then. How did that get started? Well, first off, I appreciate the kind words, sir. I don't, I don't know if I'm leading the way in any means. There's some really talented people out there um, doing some really good things. So I don't want to take anything away from, from those people, but thank you. That's okay. Um, you're not saying it. I'm saying it. <laughs> Well, I just want like <laughs> for any of the people that are actually really good at what they're they're doing with editing. I just want you to know it's not me saying it; it's Mingas. Actually, do you want me to call you Mingas or Mark while we're live? Or you can call me Mingas. That's weird calling me Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm in trouble, it's my parents. I don't know. No one calls me Mark. So okay, you can call me Mingas. Okay, yeah. good because that's what I feel comfortable saying too. Yeah. Um, I started editing for Z. Um, 
yeah, 2019, I guess it would be, and I do not know the month. So, but two, yep. two to three years ago at this point, mm-hmm. he was, his stream was picking up and at the time, I, I feel like it's still kind of a thing depending on who's streaming you watch or what kind of scene you're in. But the time a lot of the COD people and Blackout had intros, like Doug had an intro, Teep had an intro, like a lot of the guys, Doug is rock, excuse me. Um, a lot of the guys had just, you know, like a three to four minute intro video that kind of um, brought some energy to the stream, showed some highlights, mm. hyped everybody up, et cetera. So yeah, I was talking with Zach at the time and it's like we should get an intro video for you and he's like dude i'm down but i don't know how to do that i was like oh well i'll do it surprising (laughs) 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 zach computers not knowing what (laughs) i don't know guys it just doesn't work i don't know i don't know um so yeah i that was the first video I did was Zach's intro and ended up coming out. I feel like for my first video, it was good. I watch it back now and there's so many things that I kind of like mm, about, but I feel like for the first video, it came out fine. And that's what kind of kickstarted me into editing. And yeah, that whole world. Wait, no, are we talking about the OG? Is there, how many intro videos have there been? Because I only know of two. Yeah, it'd be the OG one. The most one. recent one? Yeah, the OG the, one. That was yeah, the money's all coming in. Money keep coming in. I can't lose. Yeah, that yeah. one. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. That's a work of art. I love that thing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about work of art, but I I think it. the reason it worked well is because I was in Zach's stream like all day, every day. So it was easy to pick out moments that i knew people would like and relate to mm. so i think that's why the the i don't think the edit itself is that good i think the songs were were fine in it and the clips were pretty good but yeah I, no, I, don't, people liked it for a while some credit. So there's some sniping in there that transitions to other sniping it's just and it gets it gets um it definitely got a lot of hype going i remember all yeah. the time especially on um when there's enough people in there that you know start spamming in chat and all of a sudden you, know, you get excited for the stream and that yeah that intro video is um probably my favorite thing i've ever seen on twitch ever ever Dang. how much twitch yep. do you watch <laughs> well let's not come into that um, no i'm honestly it's since um since iceman uh introduced me to zach through uh, simply just playing together, and I, I um, you know, Zach was um, being spectated by Isaac because Isaac died, and I saw him work and finesse a house, and I'm like, oh, this guy's a demon. I gotta right. go check out his stream, and then said hello in the stream. It was probably you and a couple of mods said hello, very welcoming, and I'm like, it felt like home. So, pretty much been in in Z and also in Joe because at the time. They were the duo and, and you know, mm-hmm. they're rolling together all the time. So pretty much it's just them who who I've watched, which is um so you are you are the man in, in both of those, like the man. Like the head mod, the editor. Yeah. <laughs> He's the man. So uh, you came across Joe from Z, I'm guessing, or was it from Wages? Did you play against Joe? I never played against Joe. Joe was actually playing with it's weird to think about now because of like I feel like people who know Joe now know him as this like really bubbly, outgoing, almost like a puppy dog kind of a guy. And Mm. it's just weird to think (laughs) about him because he that's how he got into blackout as well was like wagers. And he Mm. was running with some demons like some wager kids. Yeah, that were like, "Mm." if you know the scene, you know, if you know, you know. Um, So. Yeah, I met Joe through Zach, but for the longest time, I thought Joe did not like me at all. And I can't remember why he I felt that way, but I don't know, you just get like feelings about people like, ah, I don't know. But yeah, that's actually how I started working with Joe is through Zach's intro. I believe he saw it. He was like, yo, gas, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, go, oh my God, you know how Joe is. And yeah. um, 
I think he DM'd me and just like, can you do an intro video for me? I was like, yeah, man, I would love to. So I actually did an intro for Joe as well. And I think the intro made it one stream on his stream. <laughs> no way. Yeah, it was like, I still have the video. It's, I think it's fine. The problem is, is I got really excited and I think I made it too long. And so people were just oh. kind of sitting there like, okay, when do, when do you come on? Um, and I think I've seen, I think I've, have you shown that? Maybe like bits and pieces of it on stream once? I've played it before Recently? on my stream once or twice. I don't know if Joe's ever played it before. I think he's embarrassed of it. Oh, nah. I don't know. I don't know. I can't know. take that serious. But yeah, that's how, um, that's how I met Joe. Uh, yeah, very similar. He, he just asked if I could, and I was like, yeah, for sure. And then um, he later down the road, he, you know, when he started getting growth, he was trying to put out YouTube videos. And at the time, he was still doing them himself. And I think it was Isaac was actually telling him, like, you need to get an editor for your channel. And he's like, you think so? And so, <laughs> yeah, I just asked him. I was like, I could do your videos for free if you want. And he was like, really? I was like, yeah, man, like, I would love to try. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I met Joseph and started talking with him more. Nice. So he's he's um he's taking advantage of your uh, your free skills. I mean, yes, exactly. <laughs> pay the poos. Yes, I'm talking about um, human resources but, right now. <laughs> um. So yeah, the, your first edit for that uh, the intro video is amazing. Um, thank you. Especially if I'm if I ever think about it, the first couple of videos I've put up and wasn't even like to put on YouTube just for my own personal mucking around mm -hmm. or maybe a video project for for school or whatever um did you have any sort of background at all in putting a video together or did you just uh um, like find things on youtube or i mean i would yeah i would say yes um i had a gopro when i was little and i had friends who it's actually super random but I had friends in high school that, yeah, it's just really random now that I think about it. They were into unicycling, but not like, <laughs> yeah, I know, dude, I know, okay. I know. Um, Did not see that coming. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> they were into unicycling, but not just like riding it, like doing tricks on them, like doing rails and like, like park stuff, like you would skating but on unicycles yeah. there's like a dude there's a whole world where people do that it's really? crazy yeah so i would help film some of that stuff and i wouldn't i didn't normally piece it together one of the guys would normally uh edit his own stuff but that's what kind of got me into it at the time and then i had a gopro so i have like little home movies and stuff that i did but um yeah it was nothing like overly crazy just kind of like cutting and stitching clips together no, that, that's, um, that's cool because I kind of started the same way. I did some video stuff for like, you know, you have to put something together for school. But I also did um, some GoPro footage as well. We used to um, record uh, our games of soccer that we used to play for the boys. We used to put a highlight. Well, I used to do the highlights and stuff weekly for the videos. So it was just some cuts and zoomed in and some slow-mo. It was nothing, nothing like uh, the high-level stuff you do. But that like... Like I said, for for that intro video to be your first real edit on YouTube and stuff like that, it was um that's high level. Like, how have you kept going from that? That's amazing that you keep you've like improved <laughs> since then as well too. I love that you love that video so much. It uh, that's really cool. Um, I how do I guess the question is how do you how do you improve from there? How have you been improving? Yeah, uh, Google, Google. That's, that is the, uh, yeah, that's, it's like the short answer to, yeah, to like basically how I've learned and to get basically how I've started editing and like how I've learned to do more things is just Google and YouTube. There's, mm. there's so much 
information and free information out there right now for editing and graphics and all that stuff. You just kind of have to, the toughest part is learning what words to search for, like learning the vocabulary that you need to. So for like, for instance, like masking, I would have never known that like cutting out a clip above another clip to show the clip underneath it was called masking. So once you learn that key word, it's like, boom, now I can look how to, how to mask, how to fine tune masking, how to mask with a color grade on top, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've mostly just used like YouTube videos. And then once you get comfortable with a, a software, you can kind of figure out where to click around for doing certain things, you know? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Technically there's a lot of, um, tutorials and stuff out there to, to know the actual technical skills of it. But I also yeah. feel like you're, you're very creative in your, in your thought processes and, um, doing something different. Like I've watched so many of your editing streams. And, mm-hmm. you, and you think of these things that I, I never would have thought of and and you make it come to life. And I can't see it when you first say, this is what I'm going to do and you start doing it. I can't really see it until like the end. It's like, oh my God, how did you even think of that? <laughs> it works. Like, it works. Genius. <laughs> um, it's a real creative side of you that's, uh, that comes out in these videos, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think a lot of times it just that's a good question man um i want to say like music a lot of times influences that that's one of my favorite parts of editing is using music and editing to that um Mm. yeah i I don't know i'm i'm a big music fan i wouldn't say i'm the basic biggest music head but i just i love all music so sometimes there's just like a gut feeling when you listen to something like when an 808 kicks in or like you know there's like a slowdown or like there's a certain kick pattern on the song and you just kind of like can feel the what should naturally come um yeah and yeah some sometimes it works a lot of times what happens is it does not work for like i'm sure you know as well when you're editing you could spend an hour just like like oh i'm gonna do this and then when you go to play it back it just looks like <laughs> like dog shoo shoo and it's just awful so like, no i did not imagine that happening this way <sighs> no, 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 no trust me there's a lot of times where we sit down or i sit down and try to put something together and it just looks so corny like, uh never mind so yeah how, how, how does that um how does it affect your your flow like the time that you spend editing a video has that like as you've got more comfortable doing things gone faster or, or because you've started to be able to do so many more things and you try and do so many more things it takes longer to make a video like i know you said with joe's with joe's intro you, you sort of felt like you kept on adding and adding and adding yeah no definitely hey these are really good questions by the way i know I this that. is like in my episode three four three 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 yeah. oh three is my favorite number so that would be perfect these are really good questions, man. Um, Beautiful. So, remind me of the question: how how has the skills that I've learned affected the time I put into? Yeah, what sort of time flow do, goes into these videos, and has it changed since you started? Like, have you taken longer in a video, or does it take you uh, less time because you're so quick with it? Um. I would say I spend the same amount of time per video, but the amount that I can do per video has gotten better because I'm quicker with certain yep. things or I know what's going to work now where, you know, in the past I would have to play it back a few times and go, mm, is this mm. better? Is this better? So, yeah, I typically when it comes to like if I'm doing a, a gameplay edit for YouTube, um, I kind of allot myself a certain amount of time per video because then there's a video after it that I have to do, right? So you can't spend too much time on a single video. So I try to use as much time as I can on that video. Um, unless unless I have a lot of time, like if I have a full day to do something, then yeah, I'll sit down and play around with stuff and test some things out or try to learn something new and add to it. But um, yeah, I would say I, I spend a similar amount of time per YouTube video it's just, I, I've figured out ways to make the process faster. 
no, that's um, hundred percent understandable for sure. As you've gotten, you've developed your skills, it becomes easier. But you know, you're so creative that you can do more and more in the same time. How long does it take for, would you say, a standard 10, 12 minute YouTube edit? Because um... it's it's very rarely like a full game all the way through. You usually cut out a lot of the the filler time and all that. But like, yeah, you know, quiet time in a game. That it depends, to be honest. Again, it just depends on how much time I have to work with it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. one of the things that you can't really control in the gaming scene is how fast you have to turn around things, you know, because there's updates a lot right now in Warzone. And so if a creator gets a game using a certain gun, the, like in the morning or the evening sometimes that next day it's completely useless and it could be like the best game that they've ever had so a lot of times there's quick turnarounds on those games if there is something that you know i have to do that night or it's kind of do tomorrow i would say for joe and z if it's going on one of their main channels on average four four hours three to four and that's from downloading after like i've completed downloading the game and then that includes me getting any graphics or music that i'm going to use for the video includes um doing a little color grading um the intro the gameplay edit and then rendering it uploading it and formatting the video a lot of times like when it comes to thinking of titles i'm awful at it so it takes me a while to <laughs> to sit down and do that <laughs> So I would say like three to four on average per gameplay. Okay, so you're the, you you come up with the titles as well, not just the um the raw footage and the and the gameplay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's uh, good to know. I didn't know that. Um, but like, so I know that you uh, edit for Joe and Z, obviously, and Hitman Harris. I do. I the... help out Marcus when I can. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love that guy. Is that... <laughs> We all love that guy. He's one of the nicest guys. Yeah. Um, is is that your is that your three? Do you have more? Like how big's your My your clientele? Portfolio? Yeah, clientele. <laughs> um I have done one off videos for people here and there. And sometimes they don't even use them. <laughs> it's just like oh, really? Ah man, why? Yeah, oh, I've damn. done I've done TikToks for people. Cause they know Joe and they think I do Joe's TikToks, but I don't do Joe's TikToks. Uh, Joe has somebody else who does them. His name is Vonnie and Vonnie is in incredible. Mm -hmm. So they think I do Joe's TikToks and be like, yo, can you do a TikTok for me? And like, sure. Like, what do you need? And they'll do it. And then I'll like check in a week to see if they posted it and see how people liked it. And it's just not even there. And I'm like, dude, come on, really? man. Dude. Come on. I know. But it like, it is what it is. It, it happens. Um, I would say I do Joe and Z primarily um, for people that don't know. I I don't know what you would call the position, but like I quote unquote manage their channels and their content. So for Joe, mm -hmm. I do his main channel um, primarily. I was doing a second channel, but um, we brought on somebody else who I think you're going to be talking with later, Slim, to help with his second channel. Um, Slim's awesome. But he just smells weird, and you can tell him I said that. Um, so I do that, and then I help just manage the other things that he's got going on. Uh, Z, I do his main channel, second channel, and then any of the short form content that he does. Marcus, I'll try to help with his main channel when I can. And I, I've done one off projects here and there for people. Like I've done a video for NRG, um, their editor was sick. I believe at the time so i did a video for them um i'm trying to think of like there would be anybody else that y'all would know but yeah primarily joe and zach dude i, I was yeah the, the reason i asked that was because um you recently made the move to a full-time making this your full-time gig is mm. correct mm -hmm. correct all based on the the editing skills well i don't know about that <laughs> no. so ha so i didn't realize that you were uh managing a lot of the um the the content for for joe and z um is that sort of just 
like it naturally fell into that kind of thing or did you say how did you suggest it did they suggest it like how did that happen um i different answer for both for joe um joe i was not doing that from the beginning i was just editing and then i slowly started to give titles to the videos and kind of help strategize what we should do and it was less of him just saying b i got a gameplay for you which he still does you know he'll he'll get games on stream and he's like hey we need to do this video and i'm like sure um and joe's really involved with everything that um he's got going on so it kind of progressed from there and then joe's grown so big that he's got i think we've got five or six people that do stuff for him regularly and he's he's also got um stuff he's doing for a stream and then he's got sponsor things that he's doing he's also trying to compete so i just again i offered i said if you want i can manage your content and that way it's kind of all organized in like a central centralized way and you don't have mm-hmm. to stress so much about DMing six different people all at once. And he was like, yeah, let's try it out. Um, and Is that a standard thing for people that size? I, I'm not familiar with that. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know, to be honest. I don't really know a lot of other people in the scene besides, you know, like the people I've met through Joe and Zach. So outside of okay. those communities, I don't really know. I would... I would say yes, though. I I think it makes sense um, mm. just from like a business standpoint. If you think about any business, they have people that manage their their social media platforms and um, yeah. all, like marketing in that way. So exactly. I feel like it would it would make sense that like a I don't know like a Tim the Tant Man got like a content manager for him. Yep, for sure he would have a. Um, that's what I would imagine too. That you would have a manager who oversees a team of people especially when you get to that big because not right. you know, it's a, there's a lot of work to be done you, you can't it can't be one person that does everything. yeah yeah it's just a lot of moving pieces and it's easy to fall behind on things that need to get done you know like if you're doing a video you're like okay i got the gameplay and you don't know what you're going to say and then you go to edit publish it and you're like crap i don't have a thumbnail yeah so then you can't post the video because you don't have a yeah. thumbnail so it's just it's stuff like that where like there's just a lot of little things going on so it just i think it helps with the headaches and uh, the stress to have somebody oversee everything but that's not to say that joe isn't super involved because he is he's like he's really active with everybody um that that we work with for sure yeah i mean i mean it's, it's easy talking about it now when you when you're seeing the how the progress has come but it it would have been fascinating to see how it evolved over time going from basically zero to to now how much you you learning on the job kind of thing and figure out hey mm-hmm. we need to do this more we need to figure out this and yeah just that's fascinating to me yeah it's it's a lot of it's honestly a lot of consuming it's a lot of like consuming other people's content um seeing what's out there yeah i somebody had asked me this the other day they asked do you do you watch other Warzone creators YouTube videos and take inspiration? And I said yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Especially if it's somebody that you know does something better than you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to watch and say how how did you what the like why is this working? Um, yeah, I think that's something that people don't do a lot in this scene is branching out of your own little bubble to see what other people are doing even outside like specifically in gaming like even just looking at different games because i mean you and i i'm assuming you're still pretty cod heavy yeah you haven't swapped over to like dota or anything recently right no uh, despite (laughs) some strong requests no (laughs) but you know like there's like massive gaming communities outside of COD. So even just like branching out to like a League of Legends YouTube channel, what are they posting? Why are they enjoying that content? Um, a yeah, lot of times the answers from world. Yeah, like a lot of times the answers are really simple. I think one thing that I've learned while doing gaming is 
when I first started editing for Joe, I used to try to like, I mean, I didn't know how to do a lot, but I used to try to just do everything that I could in the video. I'm like, people need like, I wanted to see comments that say like, the editing's sick. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. flashing lights, door transitions. Oh my God. Needs but, more Star Wipe. Yeah, the, it's <laughs> like, I think sometimes it comes overbearing on the video. Like at the end of the day, you got to remember that the reason, the big reason why people are coming to watch the video is for the content. It's for the creator. So sometimes you just need to dial it back and let people play the game, which is like what we do sometimes like for rebirth games or something like that, where Joe just really has a good game. There's not a lot of need to touch it. Um, and that's something that I picked up from just searching different YouTube channels. You know, you'd click on a video and there's no like EDM in the background or anything. It's just whoever's playing and it's just a really good game. And like, why does this have 6 million views? Like, because it's just a good game. Yeah. I'm guess I guess the um it's knowing your audience as well and I know that um it, YouTube comments is a funny place especially when you do something <laughs> different. Um, I love I know, YouTube it, comments. YouTube I comments are my favorite. I, I love, love I, I I I'm a big lurker in the YouTube comments and people who reply to them. And I've seen your replies to some people as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah it's a bad habit man it's why my hairline's back to my neck dude i like i i gotta cut my stuff off sometimes because i'll be dude i'm i'm an essay kind of person like somebody will yep. say like well, why do you do I'm like well listen idiot mm -hmm. i'm gonna explain it to you da, 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 keyboard yeah. smashing yeah mm -hmm. no that's yeah like i said it's it's kind of your audience i know you did something different um with Joe and his, uh, was it the movement guide or something where it was very cinematic? It was like a flashback, the progress of where he's started. It started off with the the VHS looking old school oh, tapes. Oh, the movement tapes, yeah. The movement tapes, movement tapes, yeah. You did that was like extremely different to anything really he's had on his channel before. Yeah, and people are like it's ru it's ruining the gameplay. I want to watch the gameplay. It's like what? That's <laughs> this one isn't really about understand. the gameplay. <laughs> yeah, it's not about the gameplay. I thought that was amazing, and it was like interesting to see how it's going from an audience who was there to watch the gameplay, and then you do something different, which is amazing, and they don't get it. It's mm -hmm. like it doesn't sit well with some people sometimes. It's funny yeah. YouTube. It's a funny place. Yeah, I, that happens a lot with YouTube channels. People come to the channel expecting something. You know, like if I, for instance, I went to Kendrick Lamar's Vivo page, I'm expecting to watch music videos. If he's out there playing mm. Minecraft, I'm like, why, why are we playing Minecraft on your, your music video page? Just get extremely so, angry in the comments. Yeah. We found that out with Joe's channel in particular, um, cause he's been experimenting here and there. You know, we tried, I think you can find an apex game on that video, but it just bombed It tanks. But we, yeah. at the time, we were like, we should try posting different things so that, you know, you're not pigeonholed to Call of Duty. Yeah. Like, okay, okay, okay. So we did. But, yeah, it was the same thing. Like, people um, people just didn't want to watch that. So, I mean, some people do. Like, you know, there's, gen there's a lot of people that are just genuine fans of Joe. But I think the mass audience expects something from him. And so, yeah, when you don't deliver, it can definitely hurt. Definitely. Mm -hmm. definitely. Especially when I think if the Apex was when I was – thinking it came out was when warzone was getting a bit quiet and people were playing some branching off into different games mm -hmm. and but it just make it just goes to show that there's still that core group of people who will watch warzone even if it's going through like a quiet phase or a tough right. time or something like that yeah oh yeah um yeah it call of duty has an insanely strong community and so i know that uh yeah that you are a very regular streamer at the moment. You have been very regular, a lot. very regular. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I know that you're super busy with everything, but how is um how is this lifestyle of being the man, the behind the scenes for these big channels, changed how your gaming and your streaming and what you originally got into it for, like to show you. <sighs> Dang, man, these are good questions. Sheesh. Um, I don't, I, I don't know how to say it without sounding like overly dramatic, but it's taken a toll on my personal growth and content. No, it would. Yeah, I, 
I would say that it's it's definitely been harder to set aside time for something that I would like to do personally, which is kind of like my main priority right now. And hopefully if I watch this video back in a year, like I'm I've been good about making stuff for myself um, and I've like achieved that goal. But that's something that I'm actively working on is getting myself more organized and offloading certain things so that I can do stuff for myself. Because yeah, right now it's it's pretty time consuming. I don't think I've played Warzone. I don't think I've played Warzone since uh, Krampus was in the game, which is what, like three months, months. ago? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't played, I just haven't played games like, uh, actually, I don't even know the last time I played games. So yeah, it, um, it's, it's definitely hurt, I guess you could say, how much mm -hmm. I play games. But I also, it's, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because I've been really motivated to learn just uh, like what I'm doing now. Like I've been motivated to create videos and understand uh, like the industry and what makes things work and what makes things not work. So yep. um, yeah. No, that makes sense. Dude, it can take a toll, especially if, um, like you said, you've like you've gone full time on your own, um, like you are your own boss now. So it's really a different, it's a different drive, and and so you, you kind of feel the. I feel like you feel the stress more when it's on you. Um, if if something doesn't get done, mm -hmm. that's it's on you. Mm -hmm. There's no one else to answer to. Yep. There's no one else to answer for. So yeah, yeah it definitely could take a toll on the mental for sure. No, yeah, it's a, uh, and it it does happen, and I, it's happened to me with both Joe and Zach, and it's an awful feeling when you, you have to DM them and say, hey, video isn't going up, or hey, I could not get this done, because it I mean at the end of the day, that's like, that's your income. So yep. when you don't deliver, yeah, it's it's super stressful for sure. It definitely takes a toll. Crazy, it's gone from like a passion hobby of yours to that's your, that's your livelihood now. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, would, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a, an experience for sure. What would you say to, uh, young 2019 Brandon starting out editing oh, streaming? Man. You know, what's if funny about that question thing. is dude, I'm the kind of guy that regrets everything. I know you're not supposed <laughs> no. to, but like, I still think about like decisions I made in like junior high and high school. And I'm like, man, I would love to go back and like do something different. Be curious yeah, as to where I'm at right now. Dude, that's um, I remember, I remember conversations like as like a teenager. It's like, you, you think of all these different scenarios and how you could go back and say, oh, I wish I said this. And oh, that would have been perfect. I got him, but that's too Yep. 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 I know. I, I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole, but hmm. <laughs> uh, 2019, Brandon. Mm. As far as like, I would, if I were to give genuine advice to 2019, Brandon, I would say, as far as like the content creation side, one thing that I really wish I would have done is actually given myself a fair chance back in the day. Cause I, I, I don't think I was anything amazing at the game, but I felt like I was pretty good and I learned a lot from Zach and Joe and how they interact with their streams. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, at the time, it's not a, it's not a great excuse. I just had a lot of things going on personally with work family that sort of thing so yep. it just ended up working out and so I, I felt like it was better for me to take care of those things than to to do gaming um yep. if i were to give myself editing advice um don't even try adobe what's that don't even try Adobe. Don't even try Adobe. Yeah, for those of you guys using Premiere out there, please just switch to DaVinci Resolve. It's free and it's so much better. It's so much better. It's so much easier to use. Just don't even bother with the Adobe suite. Just, well, okay, 
maybe Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Photoshop is pretty great. I do like Photoshop mm-hmm. a lot. But Hashtag stick, ad. Yeah. Please, dude, imagine I got an Adobe sponsorship. Yeah, we'll be living large. Ooh. I'll have a studio behind me by then. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like the, the best advice I could give like a younger self or somebody who's just learning content creation is to just do it like and i it's such a like it's very cliche advice um but the thing i find just in general when it comes to work is that people love to talk and id and come up with ideas for things that they like to do but never actually sit down and do it Mm. there's a lot of times where you know sitting down and clipping content that's not fun like scrolling through and getting clips or whatever or finding music or editing sometimes editing a video is just not it's not en- enjoyable but the end process or the end result is really good so the that would be the advice i would give is to like sit down be disciplined and just do the dang thing um just get like, started yeah i'm sure you've seen it a lot too with people and twitch since you've been around for a while is like there's a lot of smaller creators out there that talk about growth and i want to do big things or they'll tweet out you know like i'm taking myself seriously i'm this year i'm hitting these numbers but then they never they never do anything about it they just hop on yep. stream and then hope for the best you know they'll stream games for four hours and then it's like dang well I've streamed for 16 hours this month. Why haven't I grown? It's like, well, have you sat down and thought about, like, have you tried anything different? Have you done anything different? Or are you just going to, like, hop on and play games with the boys? So. um, I feel like that's something that's a very, I don't know if it's contagious, but it's a very, um, very common thing that people think once you you get on stream, people are just going to watch you Mm -hmm. just because you're on. Right. When in fact, there's like millions of other people yep. doing the same thing as you. Yeah. Nobody knows time. you. Nobody, nobody, knows, nobody you. knows you. If you're, yeah. I mean, even like, like Zach and Joe, like Joe is massive, but dude, you could, you could talk about Joe's name and any other click and nobody knows Joe. So like, yep. what is, what is Joe going to do to get his name out there? Like, what are, what are some things that you can do? to gain exposure and there's a lot of really good mediums to do that and there's a lot of creative ways to do that it's just a matter of of like sitting down and doing it um but like you said i think it is kind of contagious for smaller streamers in general um is there's a there's a big difference between hopping on and playing games with your friends and like hopping on and trying to grow your stream and like interacting with your community and um, doing things that will bring people in. People don't know your friends. Over time, maybe they do, you know? Like, so it's it's hard for somebody to hop in and just, like, instantly feel like, you know, this is another sitcom episode with Mingas and the boys because they don't know Mingas and they don't know the boys. So, um, yeah, I, that would be, I guess, going back to, like, the advice question, um, that would be the advice I would give myself and, like, other people just starting out is like just start doing things for yourself and um do things outside of just streaming for sure yeah that's a big one i don't know yeah. i'd like joe especially is um amazing when it comes to uh advice so he mm-hmm. he he does his like just chatting for like an hour before at the end and at the start of a stream and it's mm-hmm. it's free advice that is golden um, <laughs> yeah and he always yeah, talks okay. about that kind of thing like expanding don't just you know 16 hours of streaming grinds you know use a couple of those hours to expand and use other platforms and do anything like that mm-hmm. because it's a, it's a trap to think i'm going to grind and you only stream and you yeah keep pushing the same content and you keep doing the same thing over and over like you said and it's like nothing actually happens yeah no he i give him a hard time about it and so does zach but he always does the like (laughs) your stream is a business talk it's a business your stream is a business (laughs) treat it like a business it's business (laughs) business business but it's true it's just it's funny because he says it all the time so i always roast him for it but it's true you're 
I'll, I'll do I'll do the Joe verbiage. People sometimes what people don't think about is that your stream is actually a business and you are the product. Like you are marketing yourself. You are what is it? Your MVP. You are the minimum value product of your stream. Yep. So if people like actually want to sit down and grow treat it treat it like a business and it sounds corny but like who is your demographic Who, what audience are you trying to target are you targeting 18 13 year old teenagers or are you targeting like college students are you targeting adults are you targeting primarily men are you trying to like bring in the female side are you like you know figure out that and then figure out what what is the thing that you offer that a lot of people don't i mean joe was blessed don't get it wrong. He puts in time, but my man is blessed with having like natural game skill. And so people yep. enjoy watching that. He's really good at the game. That's his thing. Movement. That's his thing. Um, mm-hmm. So that's what people turn to watch. Same with Z. Z is an incredible player. And then he's also extremely charismatic. He's really relatable. That's his thing. He talks with his chat. That's one of the things he does. I think better than maybe anybody on Twitch is like interacting with his community so what is what is your thing it doesn't have to be anything crazy you know like if we're talking warzone say you're the guy who only runs shotguns i don't know something like that you're (laughs) just you're the shotgun guy right but that's a thing like people tune in because they're like oh this is cool this guy plays using shotguns he does crazy things with shotguns like that's your thing so um yeah, a lot of times people just hop on and wondering why they're not growing. And it's because, well, what, what makes you different or better than anybody else? Like, what makes your business better than the one down the street? You know what I mean? Dude, that's, that's uh, absolute facts. Yeah. Very Joe-like. Very Joe-like. Very Joe-like. <laughs> yeah. My, one of my, sorry, this is the last, I know I'm kind of like going on tangents, but one of my least favorite Do words it. in gaming is grind. I like grind, I, yeah. I can't stand the word grind because it's misleading. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people say grind because they play games for eight hours. You know, they play mm-hmm. to like three in the morning. Like, okay, what? I mean, what next? What next? Or yeah, people will say they're grinding, but it's because they did it for a day. I so another like little. Um, I was a part of the startup world for a very brief amount of time. Very brief. I wouldn't say I'm like into the startup thing at all, but I was a part of an accelerator program and do people used to come in every day and say, yo, we're grinding right now. Mm. I'm like w- w- you just can't, you came in at nine today and you're leaving <laughs> at four. What do you mean you're grinding? But you know, they'll stay up late one night, you know, they'll, they'll all cause they're running behind on something. They stay up late till two in the morning. Mm. Like, yeah, we're grinding. It's like, yeah, but the rest of the week you're sleeping in. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, consistency is so much more important than like that one burst of energy where you feel like you're really grinding. Um, That's, um, yeah, 100%. And that applies to not just streaming or Warzone or Twitch. That's like uh, anything. That's business. That's uh, fitness. Just, People will go, I'm going to go to the gym and they go for a week and then uh-huh. expect everything to happen and then nothing happens because they don't do it the week after and they're eating cake and mm-hmm. what they don't see so, that like immediate like like yeah. whatever it is yeah yeah so i like a, i agree okay. the grind for like you know a week or two and then i don't know just can't stick to it or they don't do it smart enough like you don't have to grind like insanely hard and butt your head up against the wall right doing things for like 20 hours a day be smart mm-hmm. about it right Yeah, I think that's a common misconception Um, just in general is, you know, people watch those videos of uh, like entrepreneurs or The Rock, like The Rock is like Mm -hmm. the best cliche example, right? Up at three in the morning every day, he goes to bed at midnight, whatever. But like The Rock is a freak. He's he's not natural and he's he's got like a team of people helping him do whatever he does. So I think people think that in order to grind you have to get four hours of sleep every night. And that's, that's no. like awful advice. I feel like that's the uh, worst yeah. advice you can give people is, you know, like, oh, I didn't sleep any night. And it was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like my first reaction is why? Why did you not get any sleep last night? Is it because- Why didn't you manage your time better? What's that? Why didn't you manage your time better? Right, exactly. Like why, why are you having to go to bed so late and get up 
early? Like, are you not disciplined throughout the day? Like, what is going on to where you're not getting enough sleep? Because a lot of times what happens, and again, there are people out there that can just do it, right? There's people that genuinely get three to four hours of sleep every night and they just function. And yep. for those people, I'm like, I envy you to the world's end, but I am yeah. not. I'm a very average human being and I've like come to terms with that. I'm very, very average. You can do one night where you go to bed at two in the morning and wake up at six. Sure. Maybe even two. And like, maybe if you're like fueled on espresso shots, maybe three, but after that you are useless. And even those yep. days in between, like you're useless the day after you're not going to get any stuff done. So it's just, it's so much more productive and beneficial to stay consistent and disciplined with your sleep schedule. And obviously you can't do that every night. Like no. there's going to be nights where, you know, you, you can't get up or go to bed when you want to. But um, I just I it's it's a massive pet peeve for me to hear people say, you know, like I'm grinding. And it's because they stayed up and they did only got three hours of sleep. And then. I'm like, okay, well, why? Like, why are you not yeah. taking better care of your schedule? Exactly. It's even just just taking care of yourself in general. Like, it's it's not a recipe for longevity, right? Um, not taking care of your your mind like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yeah. Not even in gaming, like health, yeah. productivity, all that good stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now that's um yeah that's definitely a big no no for that. For that, uh, for that side of the grind, basically. But I remember, so I'm going to share with you my first YouTube experience. Ooh. How I came across YouTube was um, like a year or two after YouTube came out and Call of Duty at the time, it might have been Modern Warfare 3, um, started uh, saying, if you link your YouTube account, you can start saving your clips. Mm, so mm -hmm, things that would happen mm -hmm. in game. It might have been Black Ops Black Ops or Modern Warfare 3 or one of those earlier titles. And um, so I've made a YouTube account simply to upload um, clips of me playing against my friends and mm -hmm. throwing knives. But there was this guy, and I don't know how far he went with it, but he was, he started uploading clips to YouTube back then. This is like 2008, maybe. And he started uploading just throwing knives. He was uh, literally would run around the map dropping 20s and 30s with was it only, only use me throwing blade knives. throwing knives literally throwing knives i know was his name only use me blade i can't remember his name it, it was australian though so i'm not sure if it's because i know there's a guy now called these knives only yes i've seen him I'm not, mm -hmm. yeah but that was like the first example i ever saw of someone doing something different and like a unique spin on things and uploading and so he ended up getting signed um for a highlights show or something really like the first time I ever heard of um, people promoting Call of Duty clips. And that was like 2009, 2010 at the latest. That, that was, yeah, that's the first time I ever heard of someone doing something different because we were all uploading our own clips and nothing was coming of it. It was literally for our, our own resources. But it just goes to show even back then, um, you do something uniquely different and, and have like a, something special about it and and you could do anything with it yeah no it, it's true it really it really doesn't have to be anything crazy um i mean there's ways like that you can get super wild to set yourself apart and at the end of the day sometimes people just enjoy watching the creator as well you know if you have a good mm. personality sometimes that's not enough but you know sometimes all you really need is just to like go on stream and talk. And I think that is also something that a lot of people, including um, myself, and like it's really hard to come to terms with, you know, that somebody just wants to watch you mm. do your thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like, it's like, a, it's a weird thing to think about, but sometimes it's, it's all it really takes. Um, it's just like, yeah, you and your personality. Definitely. I, personally, I know, like, not trying to talk about myself too much because it's all about you, this podcast. No, 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 no. I would love to hear more about you. No. It is something that I definitely um, struggled with for a, a number of months, um, trying to feel like I had to 
play well on stream rather than people being there just to see me and hear what I have to say. But I did bring up your name with, I think it was D, and I said that uh, we're talking about your streams and and I thought you are the, one of the most entertaining people I like to watch too when I know people that come online like the Yeah, see, that's just so guys. weird to hear people yeah. say Yeah. It's just like a weird I, thing. I, when I, I tab a lot of people and I'll, I'll go cycle through a few people, but yours is one that I'll always have first and I'll listen to and have you up on screen because I love the way you engage with the chat and I love what you got to say. And I know you probably feel uncomfortable with me saying that to your face, but that's always how I felt <laughs> seeing you stream. No, that's very kind. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't ever feel that way. Like, I, I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way when you're streaming, you know, like there's moments where you don't see a reaction that you want to see or like, you know, you're not playing the best. You're like, ah, oh, man, I should just yeah. end the stream. But like a lot of people just enjoy watching you um, yep. and what you're doing. Yeah, I think it's more important that I just, I know I've said it a few times, but for creating, I think it's just more important to be consistent than how good the gameplay is. There's there's so many people out there creating Call of Duty videos, right? If we're yep. still talking Call of Duty, it doesn't matter. It could be anything, right? Music, yep. um, whatever. But how many people are putting in the time to consistently do it? Like how many people are actively present on your feed at all times? The more mm. often that you can put out yourself and what you're doing, the more often people are going to see you. And um, even if it's not great content, people recognize work and they mm. recognize uh, it's really easy to see when somebody's putting in time to something. It's, it's so yep. easy, to, even if it's not great quality, like it's just so easy to recognize when that's being done. Um, people gravitate to that for sure. Let me ask you a question though. Uh -oh. Where do you feel like you're at with yourself and creating content? And what do you what do you feel like is something that you really need to work on to improve with your content? Dude, okay. Roles reversed. Um uh personally, well, I started just to um because I was um gaming with friends playing Call of Duty and I had had the means to get a PC. And um, obviously, going from PS4 to PC is a huge upgrade in itself mm -hmm. for Warzone. And I'm like, you know what? I could stream. I'd seen people stream. I'd been watching streamers for a while. I'd seen friends start up and, you know, one or two viewers here and there. And it's like, oh, I'll, I'll turn mine on and see who wants to hang out and do stuff. So I never started streaming because I thought I was nasty at the game and getting insane clips or anything like that. I literally loved um, what joe and z were like at the time where it's the community it was almost like one community like everyone was mm. in the same chat at the same time that like vibes are insane everyone knows you everyone's calling each other kings and queens and compliments and then roasting each other at the same time and spamming emotes i always love that um so personally i love that side of things um it took a while to to realize not to worry about what i'm doing on stream and to try and worry about the chat more but personally i love uh, i'm doing whatever i feel like to be honest and i don't know if that's good for growth or, or not but um i don't have any intentions to do full time anything like that so for me it's just trying different things trying um different things putting putting myself outside my comfort comfort zone like this especially is definitely far outside my comfort zone and um yeah i just because I feel like, because I'm getting old, I'm one of the older guys that you would see on Twitch stop, in the 30s. Stop, stop. You're Time's not Time's running out. Just <laughs> do it. <laughs> got a year left and I'm done. I got a year left. My life is going to be over soon. Might as well try it now. So it's definitely a hobby of mine that I enjoy. I really enjoy um, seeing people's names in chat and and trying something, whether I'm good at it or, good at it or not. It's yeah. definitely something just, Yeah. If the opportunity presented itself, would you go full time? If all of a sudden this it, podcast took off, you got a million views per episode, you're making like Minga's money, twenty thousand dollars a month. Wow. Would you do no, it? it would, honestly, the way I'm the way I have my life at the moment, it would have to be like a mega 
sudden shift and I would have to make mega bucks. There's like, I have a family, I have kids, mm -hmm. I have responsibilities. Um, mm -hmm. I work for my family as well. So um, I am almost my own boss. It would have to be like a life changing amount of money yeah. to start suddenly coming to get away from all that. Um, so probably not, but yeah, you never know. No, I know. Yeah. How about yourself? Um, if would there be something that would take you away from yes. what you're doing now? Yeah. Uh, yep. Probably. Well, finances would be one because I'm in a similar boat. Like I'm not, I'm not 21 anymore. You know, I have to pay mm. for, I have to pay for health insurance. Like yeah. I have rent I have to pay, you know, it's like, I'm very lucky to have a support system around me, but as far as me taking care of myself, it's, it's me. So yep. um, at the end of the day, if this, whatever I'm doing now doesn't take off to a point where I feel like I can put away money long term, mm. then yeah, I would, I would go back to engineering for sure. Okay. Um, I don't think I'd, I'd like to do YouTube editing full time, like, you know, 10 years down the road. It, okay. It's really fun. I enjoy it but there's only so much you can do and i feel like the lifestyle that comes with it it's not a bad one by any means but it's yeah it's just it's a lot of hours put into yep. things that you could be doing um like i could be spending some nights doing other things so yep. i think down the road i don't know if i'd like to get back into engineering in some aspect or start up a business of my own Okay. somewhere um but yeah i would say the biggest reason would just be finances um i know a lot of people see streaming and think a thousand subs per month and you're set but that's no, just not quite. that's not the reality no no i definitely think yeah if you, if you get into streaming for the money you're looking at it the wrong way yes a thousand percent definitely especially if you're just getting started because you uh, not making mega bucks. No, no. I would say no. <clears throat> for somebody who is taking it really seriously, I would not. If if you're working, I would not leave your job for like a full year because I've seen that happen. Um, I've seen people hit sub numbers mm. where they get a thousand subs. Somebody comes through. They're really generous. There's a lot of support. And so for maybe a month or two yeah they could they could support themselves but then after that it whatever happens they lose viewership something and then they don't put in the time to make up what they need to and mm. yeah they left their job for no reason and it's like an awful thing to watch but it happens a lot in gaming especially yeah that's the thing isn't it? it's a very risky um risky business and that can go both ways risky as in you could make it big and risky is as in you could not make mm -hmm. it big and things happen like you said you might have a, a sudden spike and you think it's going to last but um i think you also need to uh, this is just I, i'm not an expert i'm just seeing this from the outside that you need to try and find other ways to leverage your popularity on twitch to try and make other revenues of income rather yeah. than subs because that can be very, that's month to month. That, that could disappear the next mm -hmm. month. You don't know. Yep. Now you should definitely bring in as many revenue streams as possible. And there's a lot of ways to do that besides just Twitch and YouTube videos. There's a lot yep. of ways you can go out like, um, yeah, there's just, there's a lot of, it's, I mean, it's in like any side hustle. There's just a lot of ways that you can make money besides your primary job. Mm. So, yeah, like you had said, I think a lot of people go on Twitch and then they use their sub money as their sole income. But mm. I mean, that is, like you said, it's month to month. Um, so yeah, it can be scary doing that for sure. For sure, for sure. But I, um, before I forget, I know you had said you were kind of doing what you want with content. And I just want to say, I really respect that you're doing that. Because a lot of times what happens is people see somebody doing one thing. They're like, oh, that's working. I want to do that but mm. you're not the person who did it. So it probably is not going to be as good when you do it. So the fact that you're doing your own thing, you're doing your own talks, 
um doing your own thing on stream i've like peeped some of the games that you played on stream with everybody you're like it's super fun to watch so i respect hey. that you're doing that hey i appreciate that i yeah honestly i think i've got to that point where i used to care a lot about how other people saw me or thought or like if they would say anything behind my back or anything like that and mm -hmm. i've kind of reached that age where i, I don't care anymore yeah so there's no point caring I, 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 there's no point i'm just like we're all dead in like five years anyway so exactly what who matter? knows what's going to happen yeah i think um covid covid uh was a lot of that too where it's like it sort of made you reassess um what you were doing because i think you were locked away for so long um it maybe was a different way of mm. it gave us a different way of interacting with people and finding community and friendship and and stuff like that where i feel like all my friends are online now i, I like mm -hmm. you guys online communities at i feel like that's where i am that's my friends yeah it's, a, it's crazy no. how that changes yeah no definitely um yeah i think covid was uh, a crazy time for everybody but especially like the scene that we're in now uh mm. it definitely grew it because a lot of people came to Twitch because they couldn't interact with people in real life. Uh, which, I mean, yep. same with me. Like, I I don't know. Like you were saying, I most of the people that I know are there or streaming or on YouTube or whatever. It doesn't have to be Twitch. But, yeah, um, it definitely changed the way just we get our, like, daily social interactions for sure. Yep. Um, I, I also wanted to to ask you uh about that with um in terms of z and joe's stream because i joined i think it would have been um maybe like uh what are we now may june of like 2020 so it was like they had been streaming for a year or two more um but the first thing i noticed when i came into those streams was um the mod saying hello and mm -hmm. the community being very chatty and interactive and has it always yeah. been like that? Was it like that from the start or was that something that developed? Uh, yeah, I would say it's been like that from the start. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to speak more for Zach's community because um, I that's just where I'm more active and um, where I've been the longest. Yeah, it's. I don't I don't know what it is about. That chat, I think it's mostly a credit to Z and the kind of people he brings and keeps around and how he inter interacts with people. He's never really abrasive with anybody. You know, he's always giving everybody a hard time, which I think is a good sign of friendliness. So yeah, it's just, it's always been that, that way from, from day one, there's, there's still a few people that come through Zach's stream that were there before he even hit affiliate affiliate, which is insane. Um, that's insane yeah yeah it's it's crazy um yeah i don't know it just i think it comes down to like the people that you also put in charge as your mods because those are you know they have they have the power they have the power to remove and to keep so yeah zach did a good job with picking some of the the moderators although some of them are <laughs> i mean I think we could lose a couple swords on some of them, but uh, and same with Joe. Joe Joe's done a good job with his chat and uh, his moderators. Um, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, because I've said this um, probably with anyone I've ever spoken to about Sock Gang and and Joe and um, the the Twitch chats that I I go to. Um, if I'm a first time viewer and I say hello, what's happening or how are the games and nobody responds, it's like I'm out. Yeah. I feel like I'm good. Cause I, I like, I know everyone's different and some people go like, hey, just watch the gameplay. Like the gameplay to me is secondary and the, the chat, the community and the interaction with the streamer is probably my personally mm -hmm. number one. Um, and so that's why it's, it's so fitting in Sock Gang. Um, Zach is like a top 1% of players, but he's also one of the best, if not the best interactive mm -hmm. with chat streamer i've seen yeah so it's very addictive yeah no he's he's incredible i have uh as insane as that man drives me he <laughs> i i have like so much respect for him and what he does because of what you're saying he i think 
that is the thing that gets un, uh, slept on about him a lot. It's pretty incredible because he is, like you said, one of the best Warzone players in the world. You know, you go to his mm-hmm. stream and watch him. He does things that nobody else can do. But at the same time, he's also having like full blown conversations with people in stream, yeah. not just one person, like m- multiple, multiple, multiple yeah. people. Um, yeah, it, insane. And if you've ever streamed, you know how hard it is to play and read chat at the same time. Like you know how hard it is to try to get good gameplay while also like peeking to your right the entire time. So yep. yeah, he does an incredible job. I have no idea how he does it. I don't know if it's like it like every hundred milligrams of caffeine it like gives him an hour of like chat reading time. Yeah, I was gonna say it's the caffeine has to be. <laughs> no, nobody else drinks that much caffeine. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, yeah, but he's I, I agree when uh, when you say um, about the mods, and like I said, you you were the the head mod that I noticed and have seen the man. from the very start. So you're the man. The man. The vibes have always been there, and it's always um, I think underrated in some by some people that they don't realize how important the mods are that you have in charge of your communities, and because they're a reflection on the streamer, and they keep a lot of things in tack, in check. Mm-hmm. and uh yeah it is a huge shout out to you that the community at sock gang is so good because you've been there from the start unfortunately i have yeah. you know <laughs> i watch a lot of zach a lot yeah. a lot of zach a lot of wows so yeah in terms of other streamers it doesn't have to be big small whatever you'd like to say is there anyone that you've taken um inspiration from with the way you either content wise or personality or the way you go about your day to day life. Is there any anyone else that you've sort of looked at? Um well I will say that the majority of my day is spent watching either Zach or Joe. I they're just I have two monitors and one of them is always on my left monitor. Um as far as creating content goes um somebody i took inspiration to recently is a music guy his name is kyle beats um he's he's a cool guy i i don't know if we would ever be friends in in real life but i just like the way he does his his videos they're really easy to watch and they're really enjoy enjoyable the premise is he makes music right he makes beats he produces beats and music but What he'll do a lot of times is he'll cut to his real life. You know, they'll show him exercising or going about his business. And I feel like it's a really good way to personify him. So it's it's a lot easier to connect with him and what he's doing instead of just like a a faceless video of him talking about how he makes music. So I think that's Mm. really cool. Um, As far as streamers that i enjoy watching um minguez is somebody who i watch a lot and i take inspiration from i wish he would stream more often uh yeah i feel like we should put his link in the description to whatever whatever platform this goes on the i mean i always see you stop by a lot of the um friend streams like the smaller guys like Mm -hmm. The people who don't stream too much, you'll be in there. Even the people who maybe have one or two viewers, you'll be one of them. You always yeah. seem to be like in and around supporting people that way. Yeah. I. Well, I don't, I don't want to – I'm not a white knight by any means. But what I will say is that the I know what it's like to stream with nobody there. You know? It's, yep. And it sucks. There's like no way it around sucks. it. It just it sucks because like you could do something you think is really cool and you turn to the right and there's nothing, nothing. there. Which is like yeah. one of the reasons why you stream. You know, you like you want people to see what you're doing. Like you want to feel like you're providing something that people would enjoy. So mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of times I'll just scroll through and just check in on people in the community uh, and, and pretty much everybody from at least Zach's community, um, socking. They're all just good people and they're all pretty yeah. good at Warzone. So it makes it easy to watch. But yeah, everybody's just good people. It's really like, it's a weird thing to say, but like, even if you just go in Twitch chat, it's just easy conversation, you know? Yep. 
So 100%. yeah, I enjoy doing that as well. But I would say it, like, I don't really venture all that much outside of that community that I watch regularly. Like I, I'll put mm. on big, uh, bigger streams. Like I'll put on Nade. I still go in Teeps chat every once in a while. I don't talk as much. Um, yeah. I watch like Tim, Doc, all those guys, like the big guys to just kind of see what they're doing. But as far as like my daily content, um, yeah, I just, I love being in Zach and Joe stream. Mm. Do you think that would, if you were, if you stop being the, the editor, the, you know, the content manager and all that kind of stuff, do you think you'd still be around Twitch as much? I know it depends on your day to day life, but yeah, is that, is that something you'd stick with or is that sort of just goes hand in hand with how your role is right now? Maybe. I, got, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't say. I'd probably still watch Twitch. I don't know if I would be as interactive. I'm kind of a reclusive guy. A lot of times I just like watching. Um, so I'd probably still watch a lot. I don't know if I would still be in Twitch all that much. I'm big into like learning and um, like Earth. expanding your like what would you call that your horizon in terms of what you know about so yep. yeah like depending on the month i like we'll just go down a rabbit hole of different people that enjoy. dude like you know what was a weird one for a while well i shouldn't say it's mm. weird arm wrestling there dude really dude, there is like a ton of people there's an arm wrestling league um and there's a ton of people that are heavy into arm wrestling and like grip strength and like arm positioning and I it's very know. technical. Like I remember we used to arm wrestle uh -huh. in high school, just, you know, see who's strong and whatever. But you see people, they, they take like a, a decent amount of time to even just line their body up yeah. right, to an arm wrestle. Yeah, like, and then it's huge. like yeah. before you even do the the match, like people <laughs> fight for like wrist position and like yeah, hand yeah. position. You know, there's like a minute of them just like trying to get good position. <laughs> I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy. So yeah, I don't know if it, like down the road, I don't, it's hard to say whether or not like if I wasn't doing this, I would still be in the gaming world. I would probably mm -hmm. come back to it because I just, I love gaming, but mm -hmm. yeah, I like exploring different things for sure. No, that's good. Also helps, um, I know personally having a partner who is okay with that kind of thing and it's not like a a weird, well, why are you spending so much time mm -hmm, online mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know, having yep, that support yep. and, you know, it can be, it can be a problem if, if you guys aren't on the same page. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. So that, that is still an ongoing process. The <laughs> yeah. No, it's, a, it's never settled. There's always no. adjustments. There's always yeah. little things to change. I think it helps if they understand what Twitch is. Uh, that was the mm. biggest hurdle. Um, so I, I have a long-term girlfriend. We've been dating for um, a while now. We've been living together for forever. And that was the toughest thing for her is just getting what streaming is, you know? Yeah. Like, why do you watch somebody play games? And like, why do you, yeah. why do you have to talk to them? That was her thing too. She's like, why, why are you talking with these people you don't know? And it's like, <laughs> well, yeah. not that like, I don't know them because I kind of know them, but I don't know them. Yeah. And it's just it's a weird thing to explain to people so we've kind of gotten over that hurdle she's she's more comfortable with that side of things but yeah the whole gaming working for yourself thing is still something <laughs> still something it's weird. an adjustment yeah it's just especially with my family too like leaving leaving engineering for video games to them is mm. it's a weird step yeah that would have been a fun fun conversation <laughs> I can just imagine not even not even like the words that would come out of other people's mouths. It's more like the facial expressions, like the, trying to understand, like what? What? Say that again? Yeah, what? yeah. I've started telling more of the people around me now too, because for a while when I was doing it, I it just was easier to tell people, yeah, I'm I'm still engineering, like I'm still doing the same thing. Mm. But now, yeah, I've started telling people, and yeah, like you said, the the facial expressions you get, most of them think it's cool. They're like, "Wait, yeah, yeah, you get to work from home and you just do YouTube videos? Yeah, I, that is what I do. Like, yeah. why? Where's the channel? I want to." So most of them think it's cool, but yeah, a lot of the um, people 
around me are like, well, what have you thought about? What are you doing? I'm like, yes, I have. Mm-hmm. I've thought about it. I've considered it. Trust me. Trust me. I've thought about it a lot. It I, wasn't a uh, knee-jerk reaction. No. It definitely took some time. No, definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Because, I, yeah, I, I was doing this while I was still working for, um, I shouldn't say the name company, while I was still doing engineering um, mm. for a year and a half, two years before I took the leap. So yep. most people, like once I explain that, most people get it. They're like, oh, okay, you got it. Yeah, uh, dude, I think, um, yeah, even when you um, you kind of announced that you made the leap, it was um, it was like a, it was like a proud moment. We're like, dude, yeah, congratulations. Going, like, <laughs> we made like you it. said, just going for it. You made it. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. It, it was, uh, it, yeah, it's still scary a lot of times. And I, I genuinely think about going back to engineering just because of how stable it is. You know, yep. there's something, there's something to say about, knowing that you have income coming in every month that you're going to be taken care of like insurance i mean that all of that stuff is especially in the engineering world it, it, it's there like it's a, yep. it's a really good job and field to be a part of but you know when i get a wake up in the morning and like my fridge is right there my coffee <laughs> machine is right there <laughs> and like i'm in charge of my own schedule i just think that freedom's really hard to beat Yep, definitely, definitely. I mean, that's another side of it too that I think it's um, kind of swept under the rug is like the mental health side of things. Like when mm-hmm. you're enjoying what you do, um, I think you work harder. I think you you just get more out of it other than this is my job, this is what I do for money to I'm enjoying my life, mm-hmm. my time. Yep. And it, it sort of frees you a little bit, I feel like. Yep. Yeah. Now my grandpa used to tell me, and I don't know if it's a him thing or it's like a common saying, but the day you wake up for your job and you think of an excuse to not go in is the day you should start looking for another job. Like the day you wake up and you're like, I feel like I should call out today is when you should start considering a new career path. So that's a great saying. Yep. Yeah. I used to have that a lot with my previous job. And like I said, it was a really good job. So I never tried to complain about it. I was really blessed to be in the position that I was in. And even now I'm super blessed to be able to do what I do, but mm. you should, you should always strive to be happier. There's nothing wrong with striving to do better, you know? No. And it's, it's like, I don't want to be selfish and whatever, but there's only one you and you are yeah. the one living in you. So you have to <laughs> yeah. be happy with you. Yeah. People will love to be give advice, but that. you're the one at the end of the day living with yourself. You know, exactly. it's really easy to tell people, oh, it's fine. You'll just do this for the next 50 years and you'll be fine. But they don't got to wake up and do it every day for the next 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. hundred percent. Dude, this was really fun. He's a good I had talks. a blast talking to you, man. Yeah, this is awesome. Good talks. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure having you on here, um, Brandon. It was uh, great to get to know you a bit more. And um, mm-hmm. I hope we can do this again. Hopefully, I don't know, a year, two years, three years, and look back and talk about how we were and uh, <laughs> what we used to think about this kind of thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hopefully if you I'll still, still know me, if you haven't blocked me by then. Yeah. I was, well, let's not push it. Mm. I'm going to say hopefully I'm still in a house. <laughs> like if, if we do the next <laughs> the next podcast and – like I'm on the street corner with my phone out doing the recording. We'll know something went wrong along the way. <laughs> but no, man, oh, you were Jesus, uh, man. you were really a uh, really good host, and um, yeah, natural, natural at what you're doing. So I appreciate you having me on. Um, yeah, it was good talking to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, jeez, man, all the gas. I'm gonna have to handle that. <laughs>